The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good morning, AFTA members and industry friends. There are so many of you joining us this morning. My name is Joanne Aaron Sibia, and I'm Head of Marketing at AFTA. And I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's webinar, which is the power of customer journey marketing. And to deliver today's content, I'm very pleased to welcome back the very intelligent Sonia Vandenbosch. Welcome, Sonia, and thank you for joining us. Now, you might recall that back in June, Sonia delivered a three-part uh, marketing workshop focused on strategy, digital, and brand. And we've invited Sonia to come back. She's back by popular demand, in fact, and she's delivering some content on a topic that was of great interest to our earlier webinar participants. Sonia's originally from the Netherlands, but she's now one of us living in Sydney and she is an avid traveller. She has worked in business and marketing leadership roles all throughout Europe, North America, Asia and Australia and across a wide range of industries and as I mentioned even has skill set in our very own travel and tourism industry. She has a business which is Twin Life Marketing and it's a truly unique business which is really focused on strategic leadership and helping businesses and brands grow and create really strong marketing position. So guys, you're in for a real treat. Today she is delivering her professionalism, her expertise and her many years of experience. And I even know that Sonia is going to talk to a, a specific uh, industry group that, um, that came together after the three part uh, workshop that Sonia delivered. And she's going to talk to just how wonderful this group is, how connected they are, and just the benefits they've got from meeting regularly and investing in their business at this present time. So uh, buckle up and really enjoy what Sonia has to deliver us today. I will just mention that Sonia's prepared a worksheet that you can access in the handout section of your toolbox. So you'll see a section there, handout. Definitely download that because that is going to enable you to put into practice the learnings from today and uh, refer to that and use that uh, post uh, the webinar. The webinar is being recorded so we'll be putting that and a PDF of the slides today on the AFTER website so that you can go back and uh, refer to that content after the webinar. So I'm going to hand over to Sonia now and I'm going to come back at the end and address any questions that you guys have for Sonia. So as you're going through the webinar, think of what you can ask Sonia and let's make the most of having her expertise with us today. So Sonia, thank you. I'm going to hand over to you. Thank you for that wonderful uh, introduction, Joe. And I'm very honoured and excited to be back with you again today. And, you know, I truly hope that this session will give you some great insights, some ideas, and most of all, inspiration. And as Joe mentioned, you know, customer journey marketing was a topic that came up in the previous webinars. And today we're going to talk about what is it actually? Why is it so important? And how will customer journey marketing help you create more value for your customers and for your business? And ultimately, bring more, more stability. So now I do realize that we have a very broad range of people and businesses on this webinar today. So I've kept the information fairly general and hopefully there will be something for everyone. So let's get started. So for those of you who are new today, I was born and raised in the Netherlands, a tiny country in Northern Europe, uh, bordering with Germany and Belgium. And as I was preparing for this workshop and thinking about the power of customer journey marketing, I thought about my university days that I was lucky enough to spend in a really beautiful medieval town in the south of the Netherlands called Maastricht. Now, some of you might have heard of this town and some of you might have even been lucky enough to have visited this town. The town actually became, became quite famous in 1992 um, as the European Treaty was signed here. And at the time I was living there as a student and I was studying for my MBA, specializing in management and marketing. And the research that I did for my thesis at the time was about the 
absolute start of direct marketing. I researched how universities were starting to use coupons in their advertisements in newspapers so that the reader could actually cut out a coupon, fill in the name and address details, put it in an envelope, put a stamp on it, put it in a post box and send it back to the university. In this way, universities were able to start a one-on-one -on -one relationship with their potential students and customers. So this is truly, this truly was the start of direct marketing and building the customer journey. Now, obviously, nowadays, every business is able to have a direct relationship with their customers. However, what makes you and your business stand out is how you build and manage those relationships and obviously how your customers experience those relationships. And that's exactly what we are talking about today. In the previous workshops, I spoke about my experiences working in travel, from organizing student trips to Russia uh, in, when I was a student, to building a travel website when my husband and I were traveling around the globe, to working with Travel Indochina and helping them expand globally, and to nowadays working with Luxperia um, in Vietnam as their advisory board member. But today I would like to talk about a really beautiful group of travel operators that I've been fortunate enough to work with over the past three months. So as Joe mentioned, we started up a virtual travel group um, after the last workshops, and we meet once a month on Zoom. And I'm the facilitator, and they are obviously the participants, and there's really challenging homework in between, and the group is getting closer and closer. And I'm truly humbled by the amount of openness, sharing, support, and smiles that are going around, despite the very challenging situation um, at the moment, obviously. These guys are really taking the time to upscale themselves, to step out of their comfort zone, and to really work on a stronger and better future. So I really want to give a big shout out to the members of this group, um, and you can see them on the screen from top row, left to right. Lisa Groom from International Park Tours, Stephanie Savage from the Impulse Travel Group, Jackie Turner from Gippsland Travel, Christy Moore from Travel More, Rachel Chartres from MTA Travel, Jackie Ingram from Flying Colors Travel, Natalie Daw from Hello World Travel Camberwell, Cathy Burnett Cosgrove from Andrew Jones Travel, Paki Pereira from Sparkling Travel and Andy from Zeppelin from Zeppelin Travel. These guys truly have put a big smile on my face over the last few months. So this is my business, Twin Life Marketing. And as Joe mentioned, we help businesses with strategic direction and marketing leadership. So we obviously help advancing businesses, but what really is exciting for me is uplifting the people. So for me, there's nothing better than someone having an aha moment and realizing there is a different, better way forward and then feeling really confident to go there. So hopefully you'll get a great aha moment during the webinar today. So for today, I would like you to listen to this webinar with the following question in the back of your mind. What are our gaps and what are our opportunities? You know, last week in our travel group catch up, Stephanie Savage from the Impulse Travel Group made a very profound comment. You know, Stephanie said, although I've been in business for over 30 years, I am using this time as an opportunity to almost start afresh, to really look at my business with new, fresh eyes and to see how we can do things better, while obviously still building on the foundations that we've built up over time. So I would like to invite you to do the same today. Try to be open and try to think differently. So why customer journey marketing? In my opinion, customer journey marketing is a very smart way to do marketing because you are building strong connections with your customers, which leads to more business, more referrals and more testimonials. Also. Once set up properly, customer journey marketing is the most cost-effective and sustainable way of marketing. 
because you don't need to keep pumping money into advertising via all kinds of online and offline channels to keep bringing new people into your business. And thirdly, customer journey marketing is very, very hard to copy because it's not out in the open. And it can really help your business stand out and it can really help you create a really good customer committed culture in your business. So let's look at some statistics. So the Aberdeen Group researched 211 companies globally on the effects of having a customer journey management program in place. Now this was done over a variety of industries. So if we go from left to right, the first one you see is employee engagement. Companies with customer journey marketing in place had higher customer or employee engagement. And you know what I always believe is that when a company looks after their customers, staff are simply more proud to work for that company and they will be looked after better as well. Second one, naturally, the return on marketing investment is up. And you know what this is? This is because if you have customer journey marketing in place, the leads are far better nurtured, you know, and there's no basically no leakage. Now, the next one is improvement in customer service costs. Obviously, as a business is proactive in managing relationships, instead of being reactive and potentially fighting fires, that obviously has a very positive effect. Um, the number of positive mentions through social media channels is up, as expected. And the next one I think is really interesting and something where we can always find more and more value is that the revenue from customer referrals is up. Naturally, the happier, the more loyal our customers are, the more referrals they give us. Um, improvement in average sales cycle. This means that the sales cycle might be shortened or might be easier. And to me, that makes a lot of sense as well, as when you nurture your leads through the customer journey marketing, there is a proactive approach, which is not pushy, uh, but the steps are clear for the customer. And then finally, there's more cross-sell and upsell opportunity. And um, again, because customers that are happy and trust you are more open to new ideas and your suggestions. Now, customer journey marketing is not as effective for all companies. You know, when the purchase is quite emotional and when the value is high, it becomes more critical. Also, when there is an element of advice or service or personal contact, doing something new, unexplored terrain, it becomes more and more important. Now, naturally, this is where most of the travel products and the travel services that we are offering sit. If you are in a commodity product market and the, the value is low and there's hardly an emotional attachment to the brand, you know, and a company goes over the top, it can actually be a nuisance. And I'll give you a personal example. So I recently made a very exciting purchase. I needed to replace one of my pants, you know, and I, I love the scan pen range. I, I, I have it, but what did I do? I knew exactly what I wanted. I had the model number, I had everything. I went online and all I was looking for is where can I get this in an easy way, the cheapest. And where did I find it? I found it on eBay. So did my purchase, went smooth and easy. I received the product two days later, I was kept informed, I was a very, very satisfied customer. And I thought, this is done. This was a very easy, great transaction. But this was only the beginning. I started to get bombarded with emails and even text messages, not just from eBay, but also from Kitchen Warehouse, which was the company that I bought it through. And I got a little bit annoyed after the first two, three days, but obviously as I'm a marketeer, I wanted to hold on a bit longer just to see what happens. But after a week, I was just like, wow, this is just really intrusive. And I unsubscribed. A week later, even after I unsubscribed, I got a survey from Kitchen Warehouse and I just went, wow. Even after I unsubscribed, they're still hunting me down. So what I want to say is that more is not 
always better. You know, as a customer, I really didn't feel special. I felt like a number in a database that was being bombarded with messages, buy more, buy more, buy more, that don't even know who I am. And it really kind of ruined my customer experience that really met my expectations. They completely went overboard in a desperate way. Definitely not good for them. Uh, and especially not now that I've told all of you. So businesses often think that because nowadays we have technology and you can automate a whole lot of things, that that is customer journey marketing. Now it's not really. As we always have to start with the customer experience. You know, if you don't know and don't understand your customer, bombarding them with, you know, in my eyes, rubbish messages is not going to do you any good. So even Steve Jobs, the master of technology, says it brilliantly. You always have to start with the customer experience and work back toward the technology, not the other way around. But what is customer experience? You know, it's intangible. It is perception. You know, we can't control it 100% because it is about how the customer experience their interaction with your business. You know, no matter what the interaction is, it could be visiting your website or, you know, reading a post on social media or talking to one of your staff members or even experiencing the holiday or whatever it is. Um, but the question is, you know, are you consciously creating the customer experience and are you committed to create the best customer experience possible that is above industry standards and sets you apart. Now, why is this so important? Now, research shows us that the scale has tipped this year in 2020. People bought, used to buy from a business because of a great product and a great price. Nowadays, it's taken over by a great customer experience. Now, we obviously know that customers are becoming more and more demanding, but on the other end of the spectrum, customers are also willing to pay more for a better customer experience. Now, PwC did a research of 15,000 consumers worldwide they actually looked at 12 different countries and Australia was one of them. And interestingly enough, for most of these countries, except Japan, which is the, the, the weird outlier, customer experience plays a big role in deciding between buying options. So 74% of Australians use customer experience. Now, this is a really important slide. So listen carefully or write this down or take a photo of this slide. So this slide talks about what people find important in the customer experience. So if you look at this graph at the bottom, it says the level of importance for customer experience. And on the left-hand side, it says, I am ready to pay more for this kind of customer experience. So the items in this graph are all things that people think are 50% important in a customer experience and they're willing to pay up 10% to about 50% more for. Now, obviously this is not a travel industry research. It's a global research on consumer products. And when I look at this, I go, mm, there's probably some online products in there. So for the travel industry, it might be a little bit different, although I believe that the things that are put in this graph are absolutely relevant. So think about your business. You know, are we easy to reach? How efficient are we? How convenient are we? You know, do we have knowledgeable and friendly service? Do we have easy payment options? This is an interesting one. Human interaction is scoring very high and personalization higher than up-to-date technology and loyalty programs and higher than easy mobile experience. Um, so look at these things. And one thing that's really interesting for me as a marketeer is that really 
interesting dynamic by is it technology or is it the human interaction? Now, you know, I'm always a huge fan of human interaction because I really believe it's an innate human need. Although what we're seeing at the moment is that more and more businesses are using technology to kind of try to create a really great human experience. And um, I'm gonna give you another personal example. So I've recently become a student with Mind Valley, which is actually a, a global school for humanity. And they do these things which are called quests and they're like five week programs where you get like a video every day, you get like a 20 minute video and then you get homework to do. And every week you get like a Q and A and everything is pre-recorded and um, uh, you know, you get questionnaires and you get exams and you get like a certificate. So I've done this conscious parenting mastery course over the next last five weeks and with a teacher called Dr. Shivali. Now I've never ever met her. Uh, however, I must admit the videos and the interaction and that created a community are so well done that it actually feels like there is some human interaction, although it's completely taken over by technology. So it's just really good to have a think about this. Now, interestingly enough, the PwC research also says that 75% of people worldwide and 81% of people in Australia would want to interact with a real person more as technology improves. You know, and if you look at the countries, the lowest one again is Japan. So keep this in the back of your mind. So customer journey marketing, why are we doing it? Customer journey marketing is the tool, the process that we use to ultimately create the best customer experience possible. So there's a couple of elements. You know, we need to focus on the process and we definitely need to focus on the people. And when I say people, it's both your customers and your staff. And your staff play a very big role in this. And the process is really important to ensure that the experience is consistent and also that staff members know what to do. Now, obviously there's also technology. Technology is an enabler. It's there to, to make things easier for us. It's there to remember things for us and to do things for us, you know, so that we can automate things and we don't need to do everything ourselves. So let's look at the framework um, that I've put together for you guys. And you can find this in your worksheet um, on the front page. And you know, although the holiday itself is an important part of the customer experience, the experience with your business starts way before that, from the first contact with your business, you know, maybe visiting your website, to long after they've come back from their holidays, and hopefully go on to their next booking and tell their friends and family about how wonderful the total experience was for them. But where does it really start? It starts with how well we know our customers. And I call this customer intelligence. So customer intelligence, how well do we know our customers? So a great exercise to do is to look at where you're currently at. What do you know about your customers and whether and how you use this information? So I'm gonna help you a little bit here. So if you look at your database or your CRM system, do you know at what stages of the journey your customers are at? So do you know how many loyal fans you have? Do you know how many repeat customers you have? Do you know how many customers you have? And do you know how many prospects you have? Now, I do understand that you might have other contacts in your database, like for example, local media or local businesses or strategic partners or suppliers. But for the purpose of this exercise, I would like you to focus on the people that buy from you. So think about if you can you know, analyze that in your database. And then look at each and every contact. What information do we have available? Are the details up to date? The address details, contact details, very simple. 
do we know where they want to travel to next? Very relevant information. Do we know what type of travel they like? Do we know what type of activities they like? And maybe do we have personal info like birthdays, anniversaries, names of spouses or kids? Um, there's no need to collect all this information if you're not going to do anything with it. So, you know, think about what information do we have available and what are we doing with it? Now, I personally think that it's really good to know where they want to travel to next because then you can tailor your information. And one thing I think that's quite important at the moment, and you know, we touched on this in our strategy workshop, is you know, this changing consumer demand, this changing consumer needs at the moment with this whole strange conversation. And you know, I truly believe that there's a big group of people that will jump up and down, including myself, as soon as we're able to travel again. There's a lot of pent up demand that will come to us as soon as you know, there is more clarity. However, there might also be a group that will be a little bit more cautious and they go, mm, although I used to travel overseas, I might not want to yet, or I need more safety or I need more reassurance. So my recommendation is it's really good to find out now where your customers are at, that by the time you know we're ready to go again, you have that information and you don't need to start collecting it. So you know what messages or what communication to send to what type of people. So let's look at technology. And I wanna keep this quite basic. So what tools do we need to get the basics right? To basically store information, to collect information, and to communicate in an, in an automated way. So obviously the first thing we need is a database or what is often called a CRM system, which stand for, stands for Customer Relationship Management System. Now, ideally a CRM system covers the complete customer journey from marketing to sales, through to operations, to finance. However, this is an ideal, ideal scenario. A lot of businesses have different systems for different parts of the business. And generally speaking, a CRM system covers the marketing and sales side. However, what we're seeing is that it's often, what I see more and more happening, it's integrated with other systems in a business. Now, if you are part of a big travel group, you obviously have the backup and you have your systems in place or you might have an industry specific system um, that you're using. However, if you're starting off or if you're on your own or if someone wants to know, where do, how do I get going? There's two systems I would recommend. They're either free or very, very cost effective and they're Zoho and HubSpot. Um, the other two technologies that are very useful in our marketing, um, customer journey marketing are a marketing automation system or an email system and a survey tool. So a marketing automation system is obviously a system that can send out emails and where we can see statistics, who opens, how often they open, where they click on. But what's even more interesting, um, it's really great when we can set up triggers in this marketing automation system. Like for example, and um, sending people a reminder after they've made their so maybe seven days after they made their first inquiries, maybe sending them a welcome home email two days after they come back from their holidays, maybe sending them something six months after they've been back from their holidays, maybe sending them a birthday message on their birthday. Whatever it is, the really great thing is you can put in these triggers and then you don't need to think about it anymore. Um, now, a survey tool, is really interesting because you can actually get really great um, feedback from your customers by sending them simple surveys. So, you know, the famous one is SurveyMonkey. It's a free tool, but recently um, MailChimp uh, has added a survey tool to their system. And what I really like about this one is that even if the survey is um, uh, anonymous almost, uh, you still see the email address that it's coming from. So you actually get a little bit more intelligence. So that's just basic tools that you need, a CRM, a 
a marketing automation system and a survey tool. But let's look at the bigger shifts to make. They are in the people and in the process. So what shifts do we need to make? Now, I might sound like a broken record, but I'm repeating this as this is the absolute start of great customer journey marketing, trying to look at the world from your customer's perspective. I also know that it's really hard to do, especially because we wear our own pair of glasses, we have our own goals in mind, and you know we're so used to look at the world from our perspective. But you know what it all comes down to? It all comes down to relevance. We don't want to waste a customer's time and our energy. We really want to ensure that when we engage and when we connect with them, we communicate about something that they are interested in, but we also communicate about something that we want to talk about. Now, I'm sure that each and every one of you has been in a situation, either personal or business-wise, especially if you do some networking, where you've met someone and they just started to talk to you and talk to you and, and they started to talk to you about something that is completely not relevant to you, completely not of interest. They haven't asked you a single question and you just go, oh my God, thank God that was over. That's painful. Waste of time for you, waste of time for the other person. So we want to shift from one way to two way so that we can understand the customer perspective better. How can we get to know what the customer is thinking, feeling, finds important? What do they want? What do they need? What do they value? So we want to shift from a one way conversation to a two way conversation. Now, research shows that 77% of consumers view companies and brands that seek out and apply, and this is very important, do something with customer feedback. They find them more favorable. You know, and why is that? Because it really answers to our core human needs of being seen, heard, and values. This is what makes us human. You know, each and every one of us craves to feel worthy and to matter um, and you know believe it or not but the gift of being seen of being heard of being values is probably one of the best gifts you can give to your customers and it's really simple to do by being really interested in them and you know asking some really good open-ended questions that are relevant you know why why is such a powerful question uh, as well as tell me more. Oh, I'm really intrigued. Tell me more. Oh, that sounds really interesting. Tell me more. Ah, how did you do that? Hmm, I'm, I'm, a, I'm interested in that. So what made you think that? Oh, when did you have this epiphany? Um, you know, and if you want a good teacher for this, if any of you has children, children are brilliant at this. Why, mommy? Why, mommy? I don't understand. Why? why why so listen to them and learn from them the other thing you can do is surveys but i would really recommend to keep them very simple and very short and a simple survey that has become quite popular over the past few years and some of you might already be using at the moment is the net promoter score and the net promoter score is basically asking one question and this is all about how likely would you be to recommend us to a friend? Now there's one rating. There's a rating between zero and 10. If someone rates you a 10 or a nine, they are your absolute loyals, your loyal fans. If someone rates you a seven or an eight, they are neutral. And if someone rates between a zero and a six, they are the detractors. Um, and what you basically do to determine your net promoter score is you look at the percentage of absolute loyals and you take off that your percentage of detractors and you get a score which is between the minus 100 percent to the plus 100 percent and you know from needs improvement to absolute excellence so interestingly enough um, Bain and company they researched that 
companies that have a net promoter sc score that is higher than the industry average have higher profitability over time. So it's a really good one and it's a really simple one um, to use. Now, I also want to share another clever way to gain some, gain some insights into who likes um, something by using social media. And this is a very clever post from Flying Colors Travel. Thank you, Jackie, for letting me use this. Um, these guys do Wanderlust Wednesday to keep the travel spirit alive, but this is a great one, Machu Picchu. Hands up is, if this is on your bucket list. Great to get information from people who are interested and you can then you know, start connecting with them. The next shift I'd like you to think about is shifting from messages to experiences. And it's not about what we exactly say, but it's how do we make people feel? And you know, in the end, how we experience something is how we'll remember something. Was it positive? Was it negative? Was mm, how was the energy like? There's more to communication than just the words. And also 80% of customers say that they are more likely to do business with a company that offers personalized experiences. And why is it? It comes back to making them feel worthy, making them feel valued. And you know, how nice is it when someone knows your name or knows your preferences? You know, we all like that. Nobody wants to feel like a number. Now, each and every one of us has the absolute ability to make every interaction with our customers, with our staff members and everyone else we touch the best we can. And we have a tool that is absolute free. It's our smile. You know, I always say it's the most important thing you wear every day. It's your logo and you know, your personality. Are you caring? Are you warm? Are you friendly? It's your business card. And how you leave others feeling after an experience with you becomes your trademark. You know, Prati Pereira from Sparkling Travel, he's the guy with the biggest smile in our travel group. Um, he actually said something to us in the group. He shared something and he said, oh, you know, I used to be really stressed out and I walked into my office and it really had a bad effect on my team members. And then one day I decided to start smiling and everything changed. And, you know, his smile just lights up the world. Um, I'm going to share a personal story with you. Um, that almost spans over 20 years about an amazing customer experience. So the first time I visited Hoi An in 2001 was when my husband and I were, you know, traveling around the world. And when we arrived and, you know, got off the bus, we kind of immediately got adopted by Emma. She was the head of a local Taylor family. So Hoi An is very famous, um, a beautiful old, uh, you know, UNESCO uh, town but has lots and lots and lots and lots of different tailors. Um, she took us off the bus and she actually took us to lunch. And then we got adopted by her family and she invited us to her house for dinner. What an amazing experience. Now we really didn't really want to buy clothes because you know, we were backpacking. However, we bought more than we wanted. And we actually told all our friends that they had to go to Emma because we had this really great experience with her. Now, in 2010, uh, my parents had their 40th wedding anniversary and we went back to Hoi An and we went back to Emma's shop, obviously. And I was really hoping that my parents would get a great local experience. And we did. And I invited her back to her house. My boys were very tiny. They were about two and a half. And, you know, we had dinner with the family. And for my parents, they had an amazing time traveling, but that was absolutely the highlight of their trip. I don't need to tell you that we bought quite a lot of clothes with her um, because of the great experience we had. And then we went back last year and again, we went to visit Emma. She didn't have a tailor shop anymore. She actually now had a souvenir shop and we found her. We asked around in town and we found her. And by the time I bought, my boys had been become bigger than she has. And again, we had a really nice um, lunch experience with her. And again, I don't need to tell you that we bought more souvenirs than we actually wanted. And we're very happy with this experience. And you know, the fact that 
There are so many tailors and so many souvenir shops to choose from. It's completely irrelevant to us because of that really great experience that we had with her. Now, this is another example much closer to home. If there's any one of you that loves tea, and I do, I really love tea too. Actually, my kids love it. Every time we go shopping, they want to go to T2. Not anymore at the moment with COVID, but before COVID, it was always an experience to go there because they had all these different teas to, 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 to sample and they always had new flavors. And it was just this whole great experience and, and very, very friendly. And again, we always bought more than we wanted to. Now, even online, you can still create an experience. Now, a brand that I've talked about before and that I really like is Who Gives a Crap? You know, who do this commodity product of toilet paper. And for me, even just reading their emails is always an experience. So during COVID, when we had this crazy, you know, um, toilet crisis going on, I tried to, to buy some, you know, a box of toilet paper from them. And this is the email I got. Holy crap, we've sold out of toilet paper. Well, that was crazy. You know, with all the panic buying madness, we've sold out and are working as hard as possible to restock. While we do, we want to acknowledge that these are crazy times. We feel it too, mm, emotional connection. So while we work to restock, please think about how we can all do our bit to encourage kindness, empathy, and calm. Great message. If you have spare walls, see if your neighbors need some. Mm, go and support your favorite Chinese restaurant, watch some poppy videos. And then sign up below if you want to know when we're back in stock. Ooh, making it really easy for me. I don't need to think about it. Now, the other thing I like about these guys, so when you order your box of toilet paper, you don't just get an email which says order confirmation, but it basically says, hmm, we're in a relationship. So the next shift I'd like you to think about is how can we move from transactional to relationship? So transactional is short term. It's more rational. I ask, you deliver. You give me what I need at this point in time. Whereas relationships are obviously long-term and so much more emotional. A connection really starts to form over time and you know, becomes stronger and stronger. And emotion is so, so important. And you know why? This says it all. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you really care. So, <clears throat> How do we build a really strong relationships? What are the ingredients? Hmm. So it starts off with being respectful, goes into trusting, and it goes into inspirational. So the respectful way is very, very important in the before travel um, phase, because what I often see is, you know, when people get in touch with a company, the company straight away goes, oh, great, buy for me, buy for me, buy for me. And it's almost the same as, you know, you would see a really uh, great man or woman sitting in a on a terrace and you walk up to them and you say, oh, let's get married and have three children together. That doesn't work. You skip the whole let's get to know each other dating process. That's what often happens. So respectful is all about don't do anything without my consent. Ask my opinion. Be very interested in me. And then, you know, they start trusting. Oh, I'm in good hands. Oh, they listen to me. They really look after me and they truly care. And then, you know, the inspirational side is, ah, oh, they're really empowering me. You know, they, they're giving me really great new ideas and insights, things I've ever never thought about. They really make me feel good. Now, this is the pinnacle. Now, this was something that Jackie from Flying Colors Travel uh, mentioned again in our travel group last week when we were talking about trusting relationships. And she said, I'm actually really humbled by the trust that some of our clients give us. You know, they become our friends, but she said some of them, they basically say to me, oh, Jackie, we want to go here. You know what we like, just organize it. I mean, that's obviously the absolute pinnacle. The final shift I'd like you to think about is if I have a great one-to-one -one relationship, how can I make that broader? How can I shift that to community? And this plays into another innate human need, the feeling to belong. So this could simply be making um, you know, your customers more familiar with other team members, or it could even be you know, connecting them with other clients. 
So something that I do in my business is that about once, sometimes twice a year, I organize family get togethers at my house where I invite our clients and their families and we have a barbecue and drinks and laughs. And I don't have time to talk to everyone, but everybody is connecting. And obviously it reflects very positively back on our company and on our, on our culture. Um, now, apologies to the people who've been in lockdown. Um, however, this example is too great to not share. So Katie Burnett Cosgrove from Andrew Jones Travel, who's also part of our travel group, um, she actually has been organizing lunches for her loyal fans. And what she does is she, she's in Tasmania, she does these on the weekends. What she does is she arranges a coach, she has several pickup points and it becomes a day out. She basically makes sure they go to a beautiful vineyard, have a beautiful menu for a really reasonable price. And because it's COVID, everybody covers their own costs. But Katie's words are, um, this is really about meeting and remaining connected with those who will most need, who we will most need when the industry re returns to some norm normality. It really keeps the guests excited and this is so important. Now the sense of community, you can actually already start building before travel. So here's another great example from um, Katty that she was generous enough to, uh, to let me share with you today. So she's promoting a tour at the moment and people that are buying the tour, they will be granted a lifetime membership to the Confess Society. And you know, they will enjoy special events, tour briefings, advanced tour notifications and more. So you can use this already in other stages of your customer journey, this community aspect. So in summary, when working through your customer journey, marketing framework, think about what is my customer perspective? How can I create a two-way engaging relationship? How can I create the best possible memorable experience? How can I build relationships, build on trust, respect, inspiration and how can i ultimately use my community and make it even more sticky because this ultimately all leads to creating the best customer experience so the next question is where do we start and i will tell you start at the back start at after travel so where do we focus focus on your loyal fans first so do you know who they are and what's the difference between a loyal fan and a repeat customer? Now, a, re a loyal fan is a repeat customer, obviously, plus they are happy to give you testimonials. They're happy to refer you to their friends and family, and they absolutely love what you do. Um, they'll forgive you um, when you make a mistake. So here are some really interesting stats. So loyal fans are five times more likely to repurchase, five times more likely to forgive, seven times more likely to try a new offering and four times more likely to refer. So I would say make that your absolute priority. Then go down to your repeats, then go down to your customers, then go down to your prospect. These are people that have given you permission to communicate but haven't bought from you yet. And only then go out to new customers. Now there's one group I'm putting at the top of this pyramid because they are the absolute most important. And these are your staff members. Before you communicate with any of your customers, please make sure you involve your staff because they are always your most important customers. So let's look at after travel. You know, a customer comes back and oh, they've got tears in their eyes. They don't want to go back to work. So how can we, what, what can we do? I'm just gonna give you a couple of examples, just maybe it, it sparks some ideas, maybe there's things you're already doing. But you know, when they come back, do you communicate with them? Whether it's automated or, or whether it's personal? You know, do you offer them something? Do you ask for feedback? Do you ask for testimonials and Google reviews? Do you ask for referrals? It's a great time to ask for referrals. And you know, do you help them become a repeat customer? Do you know where they want to travel to next and when? And if so, do you tailor you know, your communication to them based on their interests and their timeline, which I think is very, very useful. Um, and then do you help them become loyal? You know, do you communicate with them one-on-one? -on -one? Do you invite them maybe to special events? Are they part of your community? 
Um, do you maybe give them advanced notifications, priorities? Is there a surprise gift? Anything. So this is an example of Luxperia who um, have a Luxperia Black Club, which is this exclusive travel society. So for people, customers of a certain value, they get this letter, which is obviously personalized. There's a signature on there. It's a welcome home letter and it welcomes them, it welcomes them into the privilege club. Um, simply works. During travel, during travel, we obviously want them to think our, our travel agent rocks. So they're obviously on their holiday and hopefully they have a really, really great experience. So do they still feel connected to us and safe? You know, maybe they have something tangible with them from your business. And um, maybe there is an opportunity to leave a surprise message somewhere, like a welcome letter in a hotel, or maybe they're celebrating something special and maybe you can arrange something. Um, a surprise always works. Um, so that's during travel. And then let's look at before travel. So hopefully, you know, when they just booked a trip, they're really, really excited and they can't wait any longer. But let's look at the awareness stage. So that is obviously new people. What can you do there from a customer journey perspective? Think about, are we easy to reach? Either our offers, if we have an offers, or our website, our phone, or whatever it is. You know, does our website maybe answer any initial questions? Is it easy to navigate? This is a good one. Can they easily find testimonials? Um, really works. And then, you know, once they get in contact with us, what contact moments do we have once they get in touch with our business? How do we help them make their decision? You know, do we educate them? Do we invite them to certain events? What do we do? And how do we help them make the decision? Um, how do we do it? And I can tell you, this is a really great point in time to ask for referrals because they're excited. They've just booked their trip. They haven't gone on their trip yet, but they've experienced how you've helped them make this decision. And then obviously when they prepare for their travel, do you have a contact moment with your customers before they leave? Now here's a really great way of how Natalie Daw from Hello World Travel Camberwell um, is using testimonials in, you know, in her social media. So she got these three amazing testimonials during COVID and she had a really nice message at the top. You know, I have the nicest people as my clients. They are all so loyal and caring, which is reinforcement of my self-worth and the value I add to, our, to your travel planning. Here are some words of kindness I have received during COVID-19. Three amazing testimonials. And then at the end, she says, Thank you for all your support. Honesty and integrity is our mantra and the good recipe for a great outcome. She's really honing in on that whole partnership thing there. So what's really important when you work through your customer journey framework is to decide what contact moments will I automate and what contact moments need to be more personal, face-to-face, -face, over the phone, handwritten. So a tool that you can use to work on this is called a customer journey map. And you find that on the second page of your handouts. So what I've done, I've put together a customer journey mapping worksheet for you, which takes you through the stages of your customer journey. And at the top, you see the elements that came out of the PwC research of what people find really interesting in a customer experience. And then on the left-hand side, you see some questions. It starts from the customer experience perspective. What is the customer searching for? What does he or she need, want, and value? And then secondly, what does the customer expect? And then what are the touch points that the customer currently has with the business, if there are any? And then think about how do we want to improve these touch points and how can we add more value? And then I've got a critical question at the end is why are we doing this? Because I don't want you to just do it for the sake of doing it. I want you to think about why are we doing it and how will we make this change? Now, obviously you can make this as big and as small as you want, but this is a, a worksheet to get you started. And ultimately, this is what we're striving for, creating an amazing customer experience before, during, and after travel where the customer feels valued, important, and well looked after, and where in return, 
the customer will stay loyal and speak highly of you and your business to their friends and family. And you get this really amplifying effect. So there's a lot in this framework. So use it, work through the steps, you know, start with your, start with your customer intelligence. Then think about, you know, your customer perspective and how they see the world and, um, and then start working through the three stages of after travel, during travel and before travel. Um, and just think about, you know, that every single interaction you have with your customer is an opportunity to create something remarkable. That's what I want to, that's what I want to leave you with. Um, so what to do next? Um, work through your customer journey framework and your mapping worksheet and involve your team. It's important. Please feel free to reach out if you have any further questions. I'm happy to talk to anyone. Um, if you haven't done yet, please connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you enjoyed this webinar, I would be very appreciative if you could leave me a short five-star Google review for my business, um, Spin Live Marketing. And finally, are there any questions? Fantastic. Thank you so much, Sonia. Uh, my uh, husband... You're very welcome. I was going to say my husband even owns a small business and I was sitting there thinking, oh, how can we shift his operations to be really customer centric? Mm. Mm. Um, That's great. I mean, this, this, this counts for any business and um, the better you do it, the better, the better you stand apart from your competitors. Uh, now, Sonia, I've got a couple of questions um, wondering if they're able to have a copy of the slide. So are you all right if we PDF them and put them on the website along with the recording? I know this is your intellectual yep. property, but if, if you're all right with that. Absolutely. That Absolutely. Yes. My absolute pleasure. The more I can help the industry, uh, the better. Oh, thank you. So, guys, um, on the after website, there's the navigation option for events and under events, there's webinars. And within that section, you can go to webinar recordings and that's where we'll put this recording and the slides. So great question. Well, I've got lots of comments in here, Sonia, saying it was really informative and uh, thank you very much. So guys, I will mention that when this webinar finishes, you'll have a quick survey that's going to pop up on your screen. So if you could take a moment to complete that survey, we'll give those, that feedback back to Sonia. And it also helps us internally make sure that, you know, we're on the right direction, supplying you with webinars that are relevant and helpful. Um, I do have a question here from, um, oh, people keep typing, it drops down, but from, Joshua saying that he found the statistics of the customer journey very helpful, Sonia. Is there a website mm -hmm. that you can refer him to where they can look a bit deeper into some of the statistics? Um, what I can do is um, the, 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 the most interesting statistics where the, the research from PwC so I can actually share that with you, Joe. Uh, that has okay. all the raw statistics. I'm happy to share that with you because it was it, it's it's open in the public. Oh, great! Um, yeah, so that's where I obviously got a lot of my statistics from. Um, yeah, I'm happy to share the report with you because um, <laughs> there, there might be some more insights in there. That's thank you. Do you think we could put that up on the website with the slide? Um, Potentially, yeah, because it's it's open in the public. I mean, I could just download it. There's this. I didn't need to put in my name or email address. Nothing. So. Oh, great. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, and uh, Jackie uh, Ingram has just said that Sonia, she's so pleased that she joined your group. Uh, you're certainly helping her think more about her business going forward. So, Jackie, thanks for joining us today and for that public praise of Sonia and her good work. Well, it's been a pleasure having Jackie in the group too. She's fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have a question here from Tracy. Um, yes. She's just wondering about marketing automation and how do you avoid an email going into spam or, or junk? I have some thoughts on that, but I don't know if you have. Um, well, there's a couple of things. Oh, Joe, do you want to kick off? 
do you want me to well, well, I was just going to say, um, I was going to say the, the system that you choose uh, to do your marketing automation help and the smarts behind that system helps with the integrity of uh, your database and making sure that it gets into an inbox rather than spam. So after personally users um, campaign monitor and We've found that if we if we send an email from that, it goes out in batches, and batches help prevent um, it being recognised by by spam filters. But also, um, if if our system gets a bounce back or a failure notification, it actually filters out those email addresses and puts them in an unsubscribed list. And by doing that, it actually helps the ranking. Um, and integrity of our of our system, which prevents over the long run it going into going into spam. So it really comes down to picking campaign monitor or one of the systems that Sonia mentioned, uh, because oh. they they actually got the smarts behind it to make sure that it just doesn't go into spam. Um, I hope that was yeah. helpful. Does that do you want to add to oh, that? That was very helpful. Yeah. The other thing that is um, quite important to look at is your subject line. So, and, and the systems can give you hints and tips on that. You know, if you have short, sharp subject lines that are of interest, that will help obviously people open the emails, but there's certain words, if you put them into subject lines, you know, they, they go straight into, into spam. Mm. Um, so the, the systems, you know, will help you with that as well. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting balance because, um, as I mentioned, you don't want to keep bombarding people. You want to send relevant information. So it's not about the more is better. It's about um, sending them the right information at the right moment. And that's where these systems can kind of give you intelligence with. Uh, but it's also thinking about, okay, is my message relevant for my customer at this point in time? You know, What do they need, want, and value, and how can I help them? Yeah. And on that, Sonia, obviously there's huge potential with um, that comes with databases and CRM systems. And mm. in order to get better information from your customers, it's important to keeping the system updated. So how do you think yes. some of our members can best do that? It's often the hardest job in any company because... Well, first of all, the first thing you need to determine is what is the information that we really need? And obviously, not more is not always better. Mm. Um, but think about what do we really need and what's an absolute must to have in this system. And then think about everybody that is touching the system. So the more team members you have that are touching the system, the harder it is to get everybody on board. And that's often where it goes wrong, especially when you have big organizations with big sales um, team member with big sales teams, because they're not interested in that. The trick is to make people understand the importance of the system. Why are we doing this? We are not doing this because we're just collecting information. We're doing this because we're creating a better customer experience that will help you make better sales in the future. So it's really important to create this whole customer experience, customer-centric culture, and explain to people what the, 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 the tool, the database is. Now, obviously, companies often update their databases in times when it's not so busy, you know, over the Christmas period or whatever. Now is a really good time. If your database is a little bit out of sync, it's a really great time to touch base with your customers update their details and, and also ask them about their travel preferences. Um, but look at, am I collecting information that is useless that we actually, can we slim it down? What do we really need? And then how are we gonna make sure that we have this culture in our business where every staff member is you know, conscious of updating this database? Uh, and then you probably have to look at it again once a year. Mm. Um, yeah, it's, it's a beast. But the better you do it, the better outcomes you're getting. Mm. That's great. Now, I know we're out of time, mm. but we have one more question, and I'd really like to touch on this because I actually want, would like your opinion on the answer. Um, do you have any tips on how to integrate social media into that customer journey marketing? 
Oh, that's a great question. Um, you know, although social media is generally not one, a one-on-one -on -one communication tool, unless you use instant messaging. And for those of you who were in the digital um, workshop, you now I, I, I showed that actually the instant messaging, um, whether that's WhatsApp or messaging via Facebook, is actually a growing trend. But what people see on social media about your business obviously does have an effect on their experience. You know, do they like what they see? Um, do they feel connected? Does it give them reassurance? Does it give them inspiration? Um, does it give them any proof? Um, and that's where obviously the testimonials come in. So my advice is actually to flip it, to use the insights that you're getting from your customer experience marketing, from your customer journey marketing, from what are you learning from your customers and use that in creating the content for your social media posts. Oh, I like um, Mm. So you flip it around. Mm. That's great. Okay, interesting. Mm. Thank you. Well, I'm just having a look. We've got no more questions, but I will finish with a um, closing co comment from Philip Boniface, who's a member of your group. He's, um, oh no, sorry, um, who joined the webinar today. He said, excellent presentation, Sonia. So constructive and motivating and some great tools. So fantastic. Thanks for joining us, Philip. And for everyone else that took the time out of the day to join us, thank you very much. As promised, we'll put a recording on the website, the slides on, a web, on the website and a link to some of those statistics um, on the website. Sonia, thank you so much again. Guys, please make sure you connect with Sonia and also fill in the quick survey following this webinar. And, and um, you never know, Sonia, hopefully we'll invite you back for another one Another webinar in October. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. And uh, I wish you a lot of um, fun, joy, and uh, learnings with uh, implementing this customer journey marketing into your business. And I really hope you will all be flourishing and you know, enjoying beautiful relationships with your customers. Thank you. Thanks, Sonia. Bye. Bye.